What's up, guys? It is Saturday, March 4th. It's 8.35 a.m., and this is going to be a crypto market update. I wanted to put on the radar for today, Coinbase is going to be doing a scheduled kind of upgrade at, I believe it was 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's going to last around 8 to 12 hours. So you're talking about the whole day today. You're going to see Coinbase kind of frozen. You're not going to be able to transact if you wanted to withdraw your stuff off of there onto, say, Uphold or Ledger. In the meantime, to kind of just wait that out in case you wanted to make any moves during that time, if your stuff's on Coinbase, you won't be able to. So just want to put that on everybody's radar. And now let's dive into the charts. So we're on the USDC plus USDT against total crypto market cap chart. And we are on the one day and we're still watching this. We're watching the 200 moving average here. If we do pop up to it, we want to get rejected at that level and we want to roll over. If we have a pop up like this, it will be negative for crypto. But if we can either just pop up or just start rolling over here, then we'll see cryptos bounce from these current levels. So this is going to be a key kind of chart that we watch as far as I have that alert set right there, because um, we'll know if we break up from there and start to have ra a rapid rise, that Bitcoin and the crypto market could have that kind of fill the CME futures gap around 20K or, or potentially even lower to retest some of those supports down there. So that will be a result of if we break up higher here, if we can roll over, then cryptos will likely bottom where they're at currently right now, 22,300, uh, 22,200 it was. Now let's go to Bitcoin versus the stock market. So we're on the 12 hour chart and it's called it pretty good. I mean, we're looking at it right here. You had to buy back in October, told you to sell it for the crash, buy at the bottom, little sell up here, little sell over there, little buy it back here, little sell here. No prepare to buy soon yet. But if we kind of pull this low to this high, we stretch it out. We have the 786 retracement sitting right at, the, right at that 12 hour 200 moving average key level, I would say. I mean, you can see that rejection got above, held as support. We broke below it, tanked, came up to it as soon as we broke back above, ripped. Now, and then we came and literally touched it here, bounced as support, ripped. And then, uh, yeah, the 786, low to high, coinciding with the 200 moving average. That served as a, you know, a critical area of support and resistance for since like September last year, the past six months. So, and I got the alert set for it. So we, we're covering the charts and we're looking at the charts that will really kind of give us that holistic look at like, yeah, all right, market is going to, you know, bottom right here and start to head higher. Or if we're going to kind of have more of a steeper correction, which may push out the timeline by a few months or so. So definitely we're at a critical time point to be able to kind of see this unfold. And likely we're going to see it in the month of March and have this direction kind of be kind of panned out, whether it be, all right, we're going to come down, we'll hold this. And then we start to bounce um, in the middle of March and go like that. Or if we come down, we hold sideways and then break below. Now we kind of know the direction. So it's going to happen Mark March, I believe. So let's go to the inverse chart of this, which is now the NASDAQ versus Bitcoin. And we want to get rejected where we're at. Same kind of thing we're looking at with USDC plus uh, USDT against total crypto market cap. Same similar kind of look here with the NASDAQ versus Bitcoin. We have the 200-day moving average sitting as um, resistance kind of just a little little hair above here. It was our point where, and I kind of like how we filled this gap. There was a gap right here. We broke down. We came up. We filled it already. Came back down. I'm sure we're pretty close to the 786 from this top down to this bottom yeah very close here coinciding with the 200 day moving average which is probably coinciding with the 12 hour as well too or it's up a little bit higher but yeah so we can see that being the case let's pull this trend line coming down like that so we're and then we have the trend line coming down so definitely you know we're, we have the area to watch that if we break above you're going to see that maybe crypto kind of corrects a little bit or it stays stable and the Nasdaq kind of rips up a little bit more. So those are kind of the mechanics that we got to watch and we got to kind of outlay or lay out the uh, the scenarios of how this chart could go up because we're not looking at just like a USD chart, Bitcoin or USD. We're looking at the stock market versus Bitcoin and there's many ways that this chart could go up. There's multiple scenarios of how it could pan out. And some are, you know, extremely bearish scenarios. Some are kind of neutral scenarios. 
scenarios, some are extremely positive scenarios. So this key level will decide all of that. And us looking at now the individual charts, like the NASDAQ chart and seeing what that's saying, the Bitcoin chart, seeing what that's saying, and then breaking it down kind of into those separate little kind of individual charts then putting it all together with that holistic pair-to-pair -pair chart. Now we're going to have a good sense of the direction of the market. But if we look at bond yields, we started correcting down here. We do see the momentum kind of remain intact to the downside since my video yesterday. If we go to the one-day chart, we are seeing that momentum starting to curl here. Monday is going to be very telling because if we kind of have a nice beat red candle come down here, this will cross and then last time we crossed like that, that was a little kind of breather here. We'd like to see that. So let's go now to the dollar and same kind of thing scenario here. We're watching the one day chart and we want to get rejected at that 200 moving average sitting right there and the 12 hours sitting right there, as well as we have the three day chart. That's like the, the top of this EMA ribbon. We want to get rejected at it. And then uh, the one week chart. We're at the top as well, too. So definitely a critical point, like from all ends, from all different chart perspectives, we're at critical kind of points that we break above, you know, and we'll see correction crypto, which maybe then this chart will break up. You know what I mean? So all these are going to play together. So let's go to the four, six hour chart. Yeah, we're seeing that we're starting to cross in. It kind of got a little iffy, you know, if we kind of broke above that 786. So this high down to this low, we got rejected right at it. But if we started to break above there, I mean, it's only a little bit up higher, the extension of it. But if we're really zooming out, we're looking at that horizontal level and how the 200 day moving average, all that stuff sitting there. Just a break of that level is not good. So was, thank God that we got rejected right there. So now it's a matter of. Uh, breaking this six hour 200 moving average to the downside now sitting around like 104. So it's very key that we break 104 and then we could see kind of the markets kind of recover here. And what a good sign is, is that stock market, the US NAS 100, three day chart, we kind of found some support on this EMA ribbon and we're trying to really hold it, get back above. If we can press higher here, like if we go up here like this, this EMA ribbon will continue to cross up. Then we have the 200 moving average right there. We'll cross up through it. And that will act as a good kind of like springboard to really get us out of this lull that we're in in the market. And you can see that on the three-day chart with the EMA ribbon, even just looking at that, and I'll hide everything else. Yeah, even just looking at the EMA ribbon, you can tell that whenever we turn red, in the EMA ribbon, we were in, you know, a recession or kind of a mini crash. So we had it back here in like 06, short mini one. Then we had it in 08, short mini one. And the 08, 09 kind of financial crash, we got above, held the support this whole time green. A little bit kind of sideways action here, but we were still above the 200 moving average, which is key. Um, and then the green, and then we went to our correction in 2018, green. This was the COVID crash, but it was like a V-shaped recovery, sent it, went parabolic, and then we flipped bearish here with the EMA ribbon to red, rejected, got below the 200 moving average, rejected, rejected, and now we're trying to flip the EMA ribbon back to green, get above the 200 moving average, which every single time that happened, that was a sign that the um, a correction was over and we continue the uptrend. So that's that's positive looking at that right there. And if we go to the weekly chart, yeah, we're, we got above this 200 moving average pretty uh, solid right now. I, I remember talking about it for so long back in late last year about how we were just kind of flirting with this area. We really need to get back above it. And here we are. So this is definitely a good sign. If we can press up through this high over here, it starts to really get interesting as far as the, the bottom being in, if we can really get above over here. So now let's go to total crypto market cap and let's go to the the three-week chart. So this three-week chart as a prepared by soon flash, um, maybe like back in December, and we're seeing the stock RSI crossing up. We're seeing the MACD ready to cross in and the TSI getting ready as well too. We got one day and 11 hours left for this candle. We saw those same kind of mechanics happening back here before more of a pump up. If I were to click here, oh, let me go. Well, first of all, come on, nail the top here, nail the bottom, nail the top, about to nail the bottom again. If we zoom in here, so that kind of rally out of the bear market in 2019 was right here where we had this rapid rise in the stock RSI. We're very 
close to having the orange cross through. We already got the blue. So that's solid. That, that mean, the momentum is kicking up. And then we have the TSI here. We had a cross up there coinciding with that and the MACD flip from red to green. We're very close to having this flip from red to green and the TSI crossing as well as look at the MACD. You know, like you have a like kind of like a baby bump, you know, of a sell off here. And then you have this huge, massive sell off spike. So we had a low and then a, a lower low. But in the, the total crypto mark cap, you had a a low and a higher low in the actual like kind of action here. So low, higher, low, higher, low. And then for this, you had a low um, and a lower low, but we're, we're multiples higher. And uh, so too, the MACD looks healthy as far as, you know, you had a high and then a higher high and this had a high and a higher high. So that's healthy, but we're seeing some hidden bullish divergence as far as the MACD goes and on some high, high time frames. Um, as well too and even looking at the rsi you can see that to be the case we got a low lower low high uh low higher low so looking very very nice like crypto was so oversold it, was, it shouldn't be where it's at right now it's kind of a blessing to see it still at these levels to be honest i would never even imagine back in 2017 18 that um here in 2023 they'd be at these levels again but you know kind of being in the space now and realizing how close we're to kind of timelines here, you can really kind of map it out to, Hey, by you kind of getting in now or but being able to buy in at these prices, you're saving years of time. So if you're just getting into crypto, you know, you're making out well, especially if you kind of already know the backdrop, the scene of what's going on here and you recognize it on top of kind of now finally getting your money in right before we're going to enter into like a hyper boom kind of regulated run, a utility phase. Yeah, definitely. You save the whole lot of time then. So let's look at the two week chart. We got the two week buy now. So we got that buy now right here, buy now right here. So I would say like, I mean, we got a month and a half to do something here because we could pull from here to this top here is around 70 days. And if we pull from here to 70 days, yeah, we got like, I would say April 10th, we need to see something. By that time, if we are not kind of breaking up through this EMA ribbon, then the odds to come back down, retest the 200 moving average gets um, more likely, I would say. So definitely key as well there. And we want to have the momentum maintain going up. So let's go to Bitcoin chart now. Let's go to the one week because we're about to close this pretty soon. Right now, we're, we're still making those higher highs, higher lows like this. Higher highs, higher lows. We are very close for the TSI to cross above the zero line. Really, if we can do that, we can have the TSI cross above the zero line. I'm confident that Bitcoin broke above the 25K level and probably broke through it like and really kind of rapidly accelerated and risen after that to be the case. I would say if we get that green line going through the uh, this horizontal line here just like when this green went through the horizontal line here you had it being you know this 2019 like pop-up so that was right here at like this moment here and that's kind of like if we're kind of looking at it we're at bitcoin yeah so if we're looking at dude it, very similar and you know it's very similar to a combination of all the bear market bottoms but you can see same type of thing. I mean, we could be in the beginning phases here like that, and this could be what's on the horizon, you know, and that makes sense. It lines up with like a 786 retrace money, money, you know, and that could happen by eight, end of April, May. You know, we see Bitcoin back at 48K and it could mimic 2019 or it could mimic something back here in 2015 where we have this last little kind of sell off like this, right? You know, we have something like this where we have an event take that takes place. And really, when we were supposed to kind of have this, if there was no events, no outside external catalysts, all this fear, we would do something like this. But if we have the, kind of the negative aspects of things kind of really set in and kind of like this, uh, you, you'll notice when all the, the, the narratives, the mood is starting to get very like kind of eerie. I don't think we're there yet. I mean, we do see some kind of warning signs. So we're on the cautious we're on the cautious level, but we really needed, we're watching that key level that I outlined in the video from yesterday. It was like 22, 222 or something like that. So definitely if you haven't watched that video from yesterday, 
watch the video from yesterday, join the Discord. It's in the announcements channel. I'll put the link in the bio. But um, yeah, so we have those two scenarios. Are we going to have this one last dump and then head into our, our bull market? Or are we going to have a 2019 style rise up here and then kind of correct back down during summer, the end of this year? Preferably, I would like to see us do a 2019 style because this gives people you know, who didn't maybe take as much profits ba back up here, they're able to take off some now knowing that, hey, I mean, it's probably likely that we're having a rapid rise here. We got to come back down, test some key levels. So I would love to see a quick kind of burst, get everybody to FOMO back in, mm -hmm. us take, a, you know, a good chunk off the top here and then kind of come back a couple months later and buy it way lower and then really head into our overall hyper boom bear uh, bull market. That's the preferred kind of scenario here. Cause if this is on the horizon, we're about to crush it. Absolutely crush it. Cause we'll be utilizing our pair to pair strategy. We'll be utilizing our FEMEX strategy and our day trading and kind of going pair to pair and kind of using the, the FEMEX profits as well to buy back into spot. So we'll be primed. So let's see if it can happen we got to hold those key levels we outlined them but um, it could go either way here we're looking similar to here and we're looking similar to back here it's just a matter of watching those levels and setting your alerts and having that strategy for if we break down here what are you going to do or if we come break up and you're not holding anything what are you going to do in that point right so really developing a game plan as far as like a balance between both of them and that's what i laid out in that 2023 game plan video as far as like how i'm going about the holdings going Going forward i shared those into the discord yesterday and then before i was in florida so join the discord and you'll be able to see those as well too they're pinned in there let's go to xrp so i'm going to go to the three week chart and we'll get an update on that so one day in 11 hours i don't know we got to see we got to see a little more of a press up here as far as if we're going to get that that uh, you know like we're at a critical time point you know i've been saying it as far as we could be at this moment you know because we're very very close and you don't see on the three week chart fake outs, right? So we're at in these next three weeks, are we gonna have a kind of fake out in the price? Are we gonna like kind of curl back down to avoid this from crossing, kind of do something like this, right? Based off Black Swan. Or are we going to actually have a true cross here? And if that's the case, then we'll see the buy now flash and likely we'll be retesting up around the 44 to you know 50 cent level. And it could be a scenario where we actually break through and now start kind of rip roaring there, especially if there's like a golden swan or a catalyst to excel and push XRP to do that, right? So definitely dealing with a key time frame after tomorrow when this three week candle closes, the one week candle closes the the next three weeks are on so it's going to be a high alert kind of watching the market on all angles during this time as far as that goes so yeah this is what we're watching my xrp let's go to the 12 hour chart we do have the momentum trying to cross up here we do see that even though we're going lower like low lower low we do have low higher low if you go to the one day chart you're seeing that we had a low Kind of like an eagle low with the bodies. We are having a lower low in the TSI, it looks like, with the MACD. See how it like the divergence? So low, lower low, low, higher low. So you're seeing this divergence play out. And uh, we'll see which one takes the cake. Because we also got to keep in mind with Bitcoin's divergence, we had the, on the one day chart, the bearish divergence. But now we're getting like kind of a neutral sign, whereas we're seeing some bullish divergence kind of kick in. So it's a matter of this level where we're at right now is going to be critical for the direction for over the next couple of weeks here. So let's go into XLM. So key level for XLM, the hold is kind of outlined right there, very to the T. You have support, 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 broke through it, kind of wrapped around, broke back above support, support, support. Notice how we touched it three times, like once, twice, three times and then broke this time we broke above and we touched it once twice three times if we come down here and we test it again i'd like to see us have a strong like v bounce right from this level and then if that's the case then likely we'll see what happens on the left will happen on the right and we'll see kind of us pop up like this but that's that horizontal key level around like 0 0.082 where we need to see that act as like a, a little trampoline there. Let's go to XCN. So what we're waiting for XCN is that 12 hour buy now signal. Yeah, we still haven't got that buy now. 
the 12 hour sell warning and sell now nail the top over here. And then right now we have the prepare to buy soon as we haven't got the buy now yet. So we're testing that kind of level that we had back here. So I would say we want to see the eight cent, eight cent point zero zero eight level hold on this. And we want to maintain the stock RSI above this 50 line. We could be at a moment kind of like right here where like kind of we had our pop up above it kind of started to try to hold but i don't know man we're definitely not i would say it looks different from here than here eh, it could kind of pass because this is kind of very scrunched up whereas this was got very volatile you know so that that could be in the cards as well but also i wouldn't i mean chain's been a tricky one you know you had it going sideways for a bit pump pumped all the way up tank down further even though the indicators down here are showing bullish divergence up the wazoo and um yeah chain's definitely a a tricky one as far as the uh, the mechanics to i guess it's like very low liquidity or something like that very thin buy and sell walls on there so anybody kind of wanting to you know sell a good ten thousand five thousand twelve thousand dollars worth of chain on the market could really kind of move it in a sense. And if we don't have kind of these key market mechanics, the dollar really decisively breaking down, coin decisively breaking up, chain could, and kind of like Songbird as well too, could keep kind of traveling down a bit or just going stable until we see some decisive moves here. So definitely chain's got to be on the radar. Personally, myself, the, the chain that I'm holding right now is for my long terms. I had laid out in my video, my top one, my top two, my top three, the methodology behind it. If you haven't seen that, I'll put that link in the bio as well too. It's in the discord. I'd say just come join the discord and watch it in there. And uh, yeah, so that's the case with chain, but uh, yeah, definitely watching the one day chart because the one day chart has prepared to buy soon buy now sell warning sell now we have prepared to buy soons we're waiting for that buy now to flash as well too so seeing that 12 hour that one day buy now flash plus like i'm pretty sure the nine hour did back here we definitely just don't want to see this this crossover on the nine hour and if we do we better see an immediate like v-shaped recovery because then depending on what bitcoin is doing could get a little sticky so for sure we got our eyes on it i would say if we're in any moment it could be this kind of like washout scenario before actually going on another big pump i just need to see kind of bitcoin decide what it wants to do here and we'll get definitely a clear direction from chain the four hour chart flash another prepare to buy soon the six hour had already flashed back here so we have the four hour the 12 hour uh, the one day i don't think we have it on the two day nope so yeah, we got to be watching that. And even if going on the 15 minute chart and you could really track it to a T if you wanted to, but uh, no, let me go to the 30 minute and we really need to get above the 200 moving average and let me uh, actually hide the screener so I can just kind of give you the full picture look here. And yeah, ever since crossing, flipping the EMA room from green, you know, we're above the 200 moving average. We went up, we broke and we went EMA ribbon red and it broke below the 200 moving average, rejected, rejected this whole way. We haven't been above the 200, 200 moving average on the 30 minute, rejected there, rejected, 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 rejected. We're starting to try to squeeze in. So I would say we could say it's on when chain breaks above the 200 moving average, which is going to be around like 0 0.0088. And if we could hold that as support and start kicking up, then I would say, yeah, chain's going to go in for a pretty kind of massive rebound rally. Because if we can do that, then likely the one day buy now is kicking in, the 12 hour buy now is kicking in, and then we're breaking trend lines um, coming down here. So I would say that's that's what we're waiting for there. And actually, I think we already did break the trend line. We're actually just kind of, uh, sometimes you can, that can happen. You can break a trend line break out kind of this fake out pump right before kind of coming back down to retest it heading lower but actually that's um, a very like bullish sign as far as like it's kind of a last washout and then it acts as like a springboard to kind of give it up kind of kick it up back to the levels that the highs over here so um very interesting stuff coming out of chain but yeah that's what we want to see for the scenario watch the 30 minute chart 200 moving average with a stargate bonus indicator watch that Watch the 12 hour one and one day by nows, the Stargate screener, and then you'll be good. So let's go to, I think I'm going to end it at, end it at that there. So yeah, that is the, the crypto market update. Those are the things that I'm watching. We're watching those key levels. We're in a key time period. So definitely, you know, get your stuff secured. Remember about the Coinbase thing today as well, too. That's happening in about three hours here since recording this video. It's 9 a.m. right now. 
Eastern Standard Time. So keep in mind about Coinbase, keep in mind about all these events coming up and keep in mind about kind of security behind your assets as well too, because that's most important at the end of the day. Security first and then kind of maximizing the gains and positioning yourself with kind of uh, a strategy that you can kind of be cool with of, all right, how much of XRP or all these different coins, how much is the quantity that you want to have in your long terms that, you know, if you weren't able to accumulate more right now before a mega moon, what would you be cool with? And then kind of just go one by one with the assets of, you know, your top priority one for the bags to be filled then the second one and kind of go in that order and just get yourself situated. You know, time is of the essence. I would say that this time's to pay more attention to the market and March is one because it's going to be madness, it seems like. And I feel like we're just in the beginning of it. So definitely, if you want to get updated, come join the Discord. Also, click subscribe at the notification bell. Get updated when I'm re- releasing these market updates, deep dives, newsletters, etc. So I'll see you guys in the next video.